If you really want to hear about it, the first thing you'll probably want to know is where I was born, and what my lousy childhood was like, and how my parents were occupied and all before they had me, and all that David Copperfield kind of crap. But I don't feel like going into it, if you want to know the truth. I decided to do, I decided I'd take a room in a hotel in New York, some very inexpensive hotel and all, and just take it easy till Wednesday. Then on Wednesday, I go home all rested up and feeling swell. I figured my parents wouldn't get old Femmer's letters saying I'd been given the axe until maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. So what I did, I told the driver to take me to Grand Central Station. It was this red hunting hat with one of those very, very long peaks. I saw it in the window of this sports store when I got out of the subway, just after I noticed that I lost all the goddamn foils. It only cost me a buck. The way I wore it, I swung the old peak around the way to the back. Very corny, I'll admit, but I liked it that way. I looked good in it that way. The hunting cap was a very obscure thing that both of us had. It was one of the only things that made him happy while he was attending Penn State Up home we wear a hat like that to shoot deer in. For Christ's sake, he said. That's a deer shooting hat. Like hell it is. My hunting cap gave me quite a lot of protection. In a way, but I got soaked anyway. I didn't care though. I walked over to Lexington and took the subway down to Grand Central. My bags were there and all, and I figured I'd sleep in that crazy waiting room where all the benches are. So that's what I did. It wasn't too bad for a while because there weren't many people and I could stick my feet up but I don't feel much like discussing it. It wasn't too nice. Finally, he meets Phoebe out front. They wrap their faces up in these cloths that were treated. treated with some secret chemical. That was, they could be buried in tombs for thousands of years, and their faces wouldn't rot or anything. Nobody knows how to do it, except the Egyptians. I was the only one left in the tomb then. I sort of liked it, in a way. It was so nice and peaceful. Then, all of a sudden, you'd never guess what I saw on the wall. You know those ducks in that lagoon right near Central Park South? That little lake? That little lake by any chance? Do you happen to know where they go, the ducks? When it's all, when it gets all frozen over? Do you happen to know by any chance? The ducks. Do you know by any chance? I, I mean, does someone come around in a truck or something and take them away or do they fly away by themselves? Go south or something? ducks as possibly a sign of innocence because he doesn't know where the ducks go which applies to him as well he wasn't sure where he would go in his life as like he didn't know where the ducks would go it expressed him being unsure and having anxiety for his future Come all the way to the car 
reversal in that ride. <laughs> anyway, we kept getting closer and closer to the carousel, and you could start to hear that nutty music it always plays. All the kids kept trying to grab for the gold ring, and so was old Phoebe. And I was sort of afraid she'd fall off the goddamn horse. But I didn't say anything or do anything. Sorry. See, the thing with kids is, if they want to grab for the ring, you have to let them do it and not say anything. If they fall off, they fall off. All the parents and mothers and everybody went on over and stood underneath the roof of the carousel so they wouldn't get soaked to the skin or anything. But I stuck around on the bench for quite a while. It always smelled like it was raining outside, even if it wasn't. And you were and you were in the only nice, dry, cozy place in the world. I love that damn museum. Boy, that museum was full of glass cases. The best thing, though, in that museum was that everything stayed right where it was. Nobody would move. Nobody would be different. The only thing that would be different would be you. It's been on the ninth grade curriculum for ages, and I think for good reason. It's a classic ninth grade book, such a, a wonderful coming of age novel. The idea was to have students be able to uh, interact with the text in a, a more hands-on way, and uh, what better way to do that than to actually take advantage of being here in New York City and exploring the places that Holden goes to and seeing what he sees and thinking about what he thinks about in those locations. One of the things that's so specifically wonderful about Catcher in the Rye is that it is such a picaresque about a young man exploring his city and a young man about the age of these students. They get really excited about it. I think they think it's fun just sort of doing some of the fun activities, but they also get kind of excited about saying, oh, look, there's the ducks, just like Holden talks about. Or, you know, when they see the different places, they can sort of say, oh, Grand Central's important because, you know, and they talk about the text that way and yet he, his world is so far removed from theirs. Most of them would never do what Holden does in terms of sneaking out in the middle of the night and so forth. It's a good chance for them to get the experience in a, a way that is sort of socially appropriate and acceptable for their age. More and more students seem to be really surprised when Holden smokes and drinks. I take that as a good sign, uh, that they think that that's a uh, shocking behavior for someone his age to be doing. Yeah, so how do you feel like that went? I think that went okay. I, I hope I didn't sound like a phony. <laughs>